Okay, so as we get ready to do the back sloper, actually what you do is you trace your front sloper. That's how we're gonna start. So we're not doing additional math to get your crotch line, your hip line, your knee line, your crease line, your circumferences. We're not doing any of that. We're just taking the front and tracing it and then we're gonna modify it. So as you can see, I've traced my front here. I need my crease line, I need my knee line, my crotch line, and my hip line already marked on here and ready to go. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to measure down five eighths of an inch from the crotch edge and make a horizontal line. So from my crotch point right here, straight down five eighths of an inch, that becomes point A because since we traced this up the front, we don't have any labeled points yet. And we're gonna draw a horizontal line. Uh, it doesn't have to go all the way across and it's not gonna be a real line. So feel free to just kind of dot it in there. You just need to know where it is. Then from A, we're gonna extend this line out to give us more of a crotch self, um, shelf in the pant out the back. And this needs to be your hip circumference divided by 16 and then um, plus like an eighth to three eighths of an inch just depends on comfort. So if your hip circumference is 38, then you would divide that by 16. You would get that number and then whatever ease that you wanted to add in there, that is going to become point B. So I'm just going to add that out that way. Um, it is parallel to the previous crotch line. This is going to become our new crotch line to account for those glute muscles. Down here below the knee, we're just going to add half an inch to either side. And this is just going to be a straight half an inch from the hemline to the knee line. Just in line with your original pant leg. Nothing weird. Just extend those out. And then the bottom of the pant is gonna be done. So we're not gonna do anything else. We're just gonna extend out our hemline here. And from the knee down, we're now finished. This is point D. This is your new point C. Just so we know where those are. From B, we're going to draw just a straight guideline to C. It's not the real line, so you can just dot it, draw it light, whatever. Then you're going to find the midpoint between B and C. And then you're going to come in perpendicularly off this line into the pant uh, half an inch three sixteenths to a half of an inch depending on uh, how curvy your thighs are and just put a point right here in the middle and then you're going to draw a slightly curved line from b that hits this new point and comes out to c this is your new inseam line in the back of the pant You want it to be pretty smooth. As you can see, now we're getting that crotch self look here. That is more typical what we see in a pair of pants. Now, right here on your hip line, this was your old point F. I'm gonna move this down just a little since we're done with the knees and then I can zoom in just a little. So this was your point F on the front, and we need to make a new point here. So we are gonna measure in three fourths of an inch off of the old F right on that hip line. And that becomes E. Now you're going to take your hip circumference 
and divide it by four and then add an inch to an inch and a quarter for ease. So if my hip circumference was 38, I would divide that by four and then add the ease and we're gonna draw a new hip line and it's gonna extend out beyond your pant front because you've got more muscle in the back than you do in the front typically. And this is going to become your new hip line, but only to E, not out here. Then from D to F, you're just gonna draw a straight line. This isn't gonna be the real line forever. So once again, you can just draw a dotted line because we're just working with a guide. Okay. Now, just let me check my camera. Okay, up here at the top of the waist, you can see how my crease line comes up and intersects with my old front. This point where this crease line intersects is G. And R is the point where my front pant used to be, right here at this corner, that is R. We are gonna find the midpoint of R to G. That becomes I. Now we are going to measure from G and we're gonna measure this way, an inch and a quarter, no, an inch and three quarters to two and a fourth inches. It just has to hit somewhere between I and R. So if I were measuring from G, measuring that inch and three quarters, measuring this way, I just have to make sure it clears I. And it can be anywhere in here in the ballpark. That's why I said it's really weird that these pants fit as well as they do because we have some arbitrary numbers happening here. From this new J point to your E point, you're gonna draw a straight line. This is a real line. It's the beginning of your crotch curve in the back. Now, we are gonna connect B to E and we're gonna get a curved line by doing so. But what we want to do is we want to kind of stay on this line until we're about an inch in from B and then start curving up to E. So you can use your curved ruler. You can eyeball it. But what you want it to be is you want from J to E to B to resemble more of a J shape. That's what's important. So this line right here is no, that's our front crotch curve. And that is no longer a relevant line over here on this side. This is our new line. We are going to extend from D down here at the knee. We're gonna extend this line up from F. We're gonna continue going but it needs to be the same measurement as your old knee line all the way up to finish your outseam, whatever this distance is. That is how long this line needs to be in a straight line. So use your curved ruler and measure from the knee up to your old S point, and then start out here at D and measure that same distance in a straight line. I've already done my measuring, so I know that my point is right here, and that becomes K. Now, over here from E to J, just kind of lightly extend that line out a little bit so you can have a good guideline. We are gonna draw a perpendicular line from 
J, but it must intersect K. So we can't put that line down here because then it wouldn't intersect K. We can't put that line up here because it's not touching K. So I need this to be perpendicular and I just slide my ruler until my ruler at this point is touching K. And then I'm going to put that line in. And this over here becomes L. Once you have L, this right here should be a right angle. But once you have L, then you're going to measure down a quarter of an inch and you're going to put a new point that becomes M. And you're going to draw that point from M to K and that becomes a real line. Now we're going to be working on the waist circumference up here. So you're going to take your waist circumference and divide it by 4. So if my waist was 33, I would divide that by 4. If yours is 30, divide that by 4, whatever your waist is. And then you're going to add an eighth of an inch for ease after that. And starting at M, we're going to measure that distance this way and put a spot when you reach that distance, and that's N. And then on your front sloper, you find your front sloper again. You're gonna find the distance between your S and your C, whatever this distance is right here. You're gonna find that same distance and you're gonna measure that in toward the pant from K and that becomes N junior. This tells me how much of a dart I need. Now, some people don't get a dart. Some people, their math just doesn't work out. It depends on how your body is. If this needs to get wider because your waist is a wider circumference than your hip, then that's okay. Don't freak out. If your dart is super huge, we might want to check your math. If you have no dart, it's okay. It's all going to work. This is just in case you um, your circumferences work with proportion, proportionate theory in order to be able to get this dart in here. Now you're going to take the distance between N and M and you're going to find the midpoint. That is O. If your line up here worked out that you have a gap between N and N junior, you're going to find the distance of that gap and you're going to center it over o, o and make sure that you have some on either side of it. And then you would come down perpendicularly from O for a um, dart. And the darts are on the buttocks are traditionally four and a half to five inches, depending on the buttock, obviously. So that becomes P. And that way we'd be putting our dart in. So we'd have a fit dart in there. And then in order to really make sure that this waist fits, you would fold your dart in before you cut to make sure that it's going to give you a duck bill like you're supposed to. Now, from F, you're going to draw a curved line to N junior. Now remember, and junior may be out here, depending on your waist circumference. It may be in here, just depending on what it is on your math and your body and how it works. So just a slightly curved line to N junior from F. Then the line is going to stay until um, from F and down to our new crotch line, which this is our new crotch line that goes all the way across. So this line stays straight to the crotch line. And then um, between the crotch line and D, right about mid thigh, you're going to find a point and you're going to come in anywhere from three eighths to half an inch. 
and then you're going to slightly curve from D to that point and out to the hip line to the hip line and up to N junior and now your out seam is made now this is no longer a relevant line This is no longer a relevant line. Okay, your new pant outline comes up the wider crotch curve, the bigger J, the angular for the buttocks and down this side and a little wider pant leg in the back because your calf muscles are bigger than the front of your calf. And that is a back sloper. This is still your hip line. This is your new crotch line. This is still your crease line. And this is still your hemline. And that's it. You have slopers that are ready to sew.